Greetings to everybody. I'm Andrea Pierulli, researcher in psychophysiology at the University of Pisa, Italy. During this talk, I will deal with the psychophysiological correlates of slow-paced breathing, which is a key element of many different contemplative practices. I will principally focus on slow pranayama breathing. With the term contemplative practices, we define an heterogeneous set of mental and physical training techniques intended to improve an individual's core psychological capacities, such as attentional and emotional self-regulation, together with a heightened state of awareness. As such, contemplative practices such as meditation can bring to a change in the individual state of consciousness and have shown to have many benefits on psychophysiological well-being. Most contemplative practices are based on two fundamental aspects, focused attention and slow-paced breathing. I will here talk of slow-paced breathing describing its effects. Indeed, the study I will present are specifically designed to rule out focused attention effects, which for our aims would have been a confounding factor. In 2018, we conducted a systematic review on slow-paced breathing and we observed an increase of prefrontal activity as measured by a functional MRI, heightened uh, heart rate variability and respiratory sinus arrhythmia. These physiological findings were paralleled from the behavioral standpoint by a lowering of anxiety and an increase of relaxation and attention. In the Eastern tradition, pranayama is described as the yogic practice of focusing on the breath. The Sanskrit word pranayama contains two segments, prana that means vital force, and yama that means control. Pranayama consists of three phases, inhalation, retention, and exhalation. There are several breathing techniques falling under the term pranayama. Each practice includes the three phases which can be performed either at a slow or a fast pace. One of the most uh, practiced pranayama technique is the square, squared breathing. Each breathing cycle consists of a deep inhalation followed by a breath retention period an exhalatory phase and a retention phase. Each phase has the same duration. Pranayama is performed at 3-4 breathing cycles per minute. There is a consensus in the scientific community on the fact that the beneficial effect of slow-paced breathing are solely due to respiratory vagal stimulation. According to Brown and colleagues and Gerrickson and Band, the bottom-up autonomic modulation derived from the slowing of breathing frequency would elicit vagus nerve activity. Indeed, vagal afferent passed through the solitary tract of the brainstem, ending in the medullary complex, which in turn sent direct projection to several brain structures, including the parabrachial nucleus, the hypothalamus, the thalamus, the amygdala, the insula, and widespread cortical areas. The vagal stimulation would induce a heightened uh, heart rate variability, a lowering of heart rate and blood pressure, inhibiting the sympathetic nervous system, and uh, indirectly the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis thus activating an anti-inflammatory pathway, resulting in a decrease of stress level and an increase of relaxation. Indeed, a review from Gerard and colleagues in 2015 underlined that the respiratory vagal stimulation causes a shift towards a parasympathetic dominance and then to an enhancement of cardiorespiratory synchronization and a lowering of heart rate and blood pressure. An opposite response is obtained during stressful conditions, which are instead characterized by sympathetic dominance. Now we ask ourselves a question. 
His respiratory vagus stimulation, the only physiological mechanism underlying the beneficial effects of slow paced breathing. Already in 1942, Nobel laureate Edgar Douglas Adrian did observe that aerobic olfactory epithelial mechanical stimulation to odorless air produce a discharge of impulses in its olfactory system, and that this effect was dependent on the airflow pressure and frequency of delivery. His finding was supported by the observation that adding a detectable odor to the delivered airflow disrupted the regular discharge within the olfactory system. In more recent years, Fontanini and Bauer showed that in animal models, the rhythmic input of odorless air in the nostril, targeting the olfactory epithelium, triggered an aeronal oscillatory pattern characterized by the alternation between the polarization and hyperpolarization in an olfactory bulb a piriform cortex, both during slow-way sleep and anesthesia, a pattern that was disrupted after tracheotomy. These data indicate that the periodic entry of air into the nose modulates the emergence of slow wave synchronization in the olfactory system. The authors hypothesize that given the large number of connections between the olfactory system and the prefrontal cortex, the slow oscillations could propagate further to the prefrontal cortex from where they would invade the entire cortical mantle. A further support to findings from Fontanini and Bauer was the discovery by Grossmaitre and colleagues that most olfactory sensory neurons within the olfactory epithelium respond also to mechanical stimuli. So, based on the findings of Fontanini and Bauer and on the proven mechanical sensitivity of olfactory neurons, we designed a study demonstrating that ultra-slow mechanical stimulation of olfactory epithelium modulates consciousness by slowing cerebral rhythms in humans. We studied the pure effects of slow pace respiration and brain activity of 12 volunteers by a density EG, avoiding the mental efforts of meditation by conveying the air stimuli only to the olfactory epithelium, so as to maximize their putative effect, using the system highlighted in the slide. In order to exactly reproduce the condition of the stimulation session, the same procedure was applied also in the sham session, where no stimulation was uh, delivered. At the end of each session, we evaluated the subjective conscious experience induced by the stimulation by using the phenomenology of conscious inventory by Pekala. Cortical source analysis showed that a massive increase of activity involving large cortical areas. Relevant increases were found within the orbitofrontal cortex the anterior cingulate, the parahippocampal gyrus, and the entorinal cortex, but for delta and theta bands. Delta showed also relevant increases in the precuneus, whereas theta in the medial prefrontal cortex. We next evaluated directional connectivity. We selected seven regions of interest based on both on our working hypothesis and on literature about relationships between breathing and brain activity. We observed that the nasal stimulation elicited a widespread information flow increase between selected cortical hubs in theta band. The increase showed a prevalent anteroposterior directionality with the orbitofrontal cortex playing a pivotal role. Notably, the information flow directionality was in line with that observed during slow-way sleep and opposite to that of normal wakefulness. See Kaminsky et al. 
1996. We finally observed significant correlation between increases in the perception of having experienced an altered state of awareness and increases of theta band activity in relevant cortical areas, including the orbitofrontal cortex, the medial prefrontal, the entorinal cortex, and the parahippocampal gyrus. We uh, will now deal with pranayama breathing problem. In this study, we investigated the role of olfactory epithelial stimulation during slow pranayama breathing with two aims, replicating the study on passive olfactory epithelial stimulation in a more ecological setting and disentangling its effects from those related to respiratory vagal stimulation. We studied the effects of the pranayama square breathing, three breathing cycle per minute, on brain activity using high density EG in experienced meditators. To ev evaluate the effects of nasal breathing, we asked the meditator to perform the pranayama from the nose, comparing it with the one performed with the mouth, nostrils blocked by plugs. Indeed, nasal breathing activates both the olfactory system by stimulating mechanoceptor within the olfactory epithelium and the parasympathetic nervous system via vagus nerve stimulation, while mouth breathing promotes only the latter mechanism. We observe that only pranayama performed through the nostril is able to induce an increase of slow activities in prefrontal region and an increase of synchronization over large cortical territories. These neurophysiological changes have led to psychological changes, such an increase of positive mood, a different awareness of the state of consciousness, and a reduction of perceived stress. Next, using graph analysis uh, on uh, scalp networks, we observed a significantly heightened network clustering coefficient, uh, local integration of information or segregation, and a higher global efficient, global integration of information at high frequencies after slow nasal breathing, both as compared to mouth breathing and resting conditions. As a conclusion, we hypothesize that the present and the relative so short duration delta theta of periods or electrical silences during slow pace breathing still allows but for local and global integrative phenomenon, the segregation and integration typical of wakefulness to take place. This fact would in turn promote a heightened attentional and emotional control and a higher bodily awareness through segregation, and the emergence of a non-ordinary state of consciousness characterized and shaped by integrative patterns different from those observed in ordinary way conscious experiences, both in terms of quality and directionality. Indeed, the marked slowing of cortical electrical activity led us to the uh, hypothesis eyes the slow paced breathing meditation is characterized by a cortical bistability, which could be at the basis and favor the correlations and interaction between slow and fast rhythms, in line with observation and hypothesis from Steriade and Varela. Thank you for your attention.